Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and this is my video series on practical JavaScript, where I walk you through the algorithm challenges at freecodecamp.com. In this video, we're going to tackle the second uh, challenge in the intermediate section, uh, the difference of two arrays. So let's jump right into it. Compare two arrays and return a new array with any items only found in one of the two given arrays, but not both. In other words, return the symmetric difference of the two arrays. Um, OK, so we have uh, this function right here, and we have two arguments. And you're always going to have two arguments. Uh, in this array, we have the integers 1, 2, 3, and 5. And in the second argument, in the second array, we have the integers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So if we ran this uh, function, we should get an array containing only one integer, in this case 4. Why? Because 4 is present in this array, but it is not present in this array. Um, this array has 1, 2, 3, and 5. This array also has 1, 2, 3, and 5. So we're only returning a, an array with one integer. And you can go ahead and scroll down. You can see the, um, the different um, examples that will have to pass. Um, some of these use integers. Some of them um, you know, use a combination of strings and integers. So um, it, it doesn't really matter what the data type is. You just have to find the difference between two arrays. And um, it looks like they've already given us uh, a variable to start off with. Uh, of our new array, and they want us to return new array. Uh, so we're going to use that uh, to our advantage. Um, that's a good little trick um, hint for us to, to think about. And they've gone ahead and gave us some helpful links here, uh, slice, filter, index, and concoct. And I'm actually going to use all four of these methods um, in order to solve the function. Um, OK, so without further ado, uh, let's just jump right into it. OK, here's my window. I've created a new JavaScript file, uh, two, because this is the second um, challenge in the intermediate section. Uh, basically, a 0, 2, dash, uh, or, or underscore diff, uh, underscore array.js. And I already went ahead and embedded that file in the uh, example.html on line 11. Um, since my earlier videos, I've created uh, different uh, um, folders for the challenges based on their uh, level. So um, if you're following along at home and if you uh, forked and cloned the repo, make sure that you include the directory um, in this uh, script tag right here. Okay, so um, uh, we are given this kind of new array right here and returning this new array. Uh, I'm going to clean that up and get rid of that. Uh, first thing I want to do, I want to combine these two arrays using the concoct method. So I'm going to say array1 concoct um, array2. Okay, And if I just return that, return new array, okay. Um, this is what we're going to get in the browser. Uh, open up my example.html file, go to the JavaScript console as we normally do, and uh, let's refresh. Um, okay, so you can see that we had our two arrays, okay, and we've combined them into one. So that's pretty cool. We have one, two, three, five. One, two, three, four, five. So um, they just, <coughs> excuse me, they just made them into one long array and the integers appear in exactly the same order. Okay, so um, now I want to use the filter method. And uh, we've seen this uh, a number of different times before. Um, basically, a filter method takes an anonymous function as an argument, and then um, it, whatever passes the, the, um, the test inside of that anonymous function, it gets returned as a new array. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, set it up here. I'm going to say new array dot filter and function. There's that anonymous function. And uh, before you've seen it, um, where it's only taken uh, one requirement, uh, one argument, and that is the um, 
that is the required argument. But the filter method, uh, along with uh, other kind of array methods, they can take uh, optional arguments as well. And it's going to be very helpful if we use those optional arguments. So I'm going to go ahead and, and show you what they are. Um, so uh, that would be the index and the array. Okay. And I mean, by the way, you can just, um, you can call these arguments anything that you want to. Uh, I just normally say value index array to make it clear. Um, so we have our um, kind of our, 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 our array that's been um, kind of joined together. So it looks like this one, two, three, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And so um, the value is going to be the current value uh, in the array. So remember, filter, it, it kind of loops through an array. And so value represents uh, whatever number or string or whatever it, it's currently on. The index, uh, which is the second and optional argument of the filter function, it represents the index number. Um, so uh, in the first iteration, the value would be 1 and the index would be 0. And in the second iteration, the value would be 2, and the index would be 1, and so on and so forth. And then the third and final uh, argument, um, also optional, is called the array. And that just, um, that, that just um, uh, refers to the entire array. So um, with that in mind, um, let's just go ahead and use it. Um, to our advantage. And I think for my solution, I'm taking a look at my notes here, and he, yeah, uh, I guess you could get away with, um, with not using this, but we're going to keep it just to make it simple. Um, anyway, forget what I'm saying. I'm just uh, rambling on. All right, so um, I need to create an if statement. So I'm going to start it off if Okay, if array, so I'm using this, um, this optional argument here to refer to the entire array. So if array slice index plus one. Okay, um, now I'm kind of going to eat my hat here. I should have um, kept that array down here. Let me just get it up here, ready to go. All right, so this is the concocted array right here uh, in the comments. So if array, all right, and it's uh, referring to this whole thing, dot slice index plus one. So remember the slice method, um, it takes everything um, with the starting value. That's the first argument. So index plus one in the first iteration, that would be index zero. And so plus one. So um, we're slicing and we're selecting everything after um, the current index. So in other words, everything to the right of the current index. All right, and then I'm just going to chain a method on that dot index of. Okay, and I'm going to say value. If it's equal to negative one, that means um, if it if you use index value index of, and uh, you're basically checking to see if a value it can be found in an array, and if it returns negative one, that means it um, it, it it is not present. It's absent in that array. All right, and then I'm going to do something very similar. I'm going to say array dot slice zero comma index. Okay, and same thing, index of value negative one. Okay, so if that is true, I'm going to return the value. Okay, and I believe that's going to do it here. Let me just save it and uh, check the time. Yep, plenty of time. And then I'm going to see if if I get uh, an array with a single integer. That single integer should be four. So I've saved it. I'm going to refresh. And look at that. I get an array with a single integer four. And that is um, what is uh, the difference between the two arrays. Uh, let me just go ahead and copy my beautiful function. Let me just make sure it passed the uh, same test at Free Code Camp. Okay, run that and look at that. Even Honey Badger cares. Oh my God, Honey Badger don't care. You remember that? Uh, anyway, uh, let's go back to the text editor and um, talk about uh, what exactly is happening here again. 
Okay, so uh, new array, we're just using the concoct method to join these two arrays together, and uh, as a result, it looks something like that. It looks exactly like that, not something like it. And then we're using the filter method. Remember, the filter method uh, returns, um, it basically filters a method, and if it passes the test, uh, inside of the anonymous function, then it's going to get passed into that new array. And so we just want to see um, if, uh, basically we're checking if there are any duplicate values. And if there are no duplicate values, uh, then we're going to return it. And see, return the value, that means it gets stored in the new array returned by the filter function. So in the if statement, we're checking for two conditions. Um, that's why we have this and right here. So if array dot slice, all right, index plus one. So uh, imagine we're in the first iteration. The first iteration would be index zero. Okay, and uh, and remember this array here. It, it's basically the same thing as new array up here. So the array, the third optional argument of the filter method, it just uh, refers to new array right there. So if array dot slice index plus one. All right. So basically, um, if we're doing the first iteration, index would be zero. So plus one. So if dot slice one, that's starting from here, index one position, all the way to the end of the array. So if this, um, uh, and then we're chaining the index of, so index of value, in this case, value is one. So if this subset of the array, all right, if we do an index of, okay, and uh, the value, so one, and if it returns negative one, in other words, if it doesn't exist, um, and if we take a look at the array, at everything to the left uh, of the current value, so that's basically what we're doing here. Um, so starting at zero, and then going all the way up to, but not including the index. And if it also doesn't appear, then we're going to return that value. So um, you're know, starting in the first position. It's a little confusing. So let's imagine we are um, kind of in the middle of the loop here. Let's say we're at index all right, 0, 1, 2, 3. OK, let's say we're at index 3, OK? which would be this five right here. So if array slice index three plus one, so that would be four, all right, so all the way from four all the way to the end of the array, all right, um, you see, does it contain a five? Okay, so here is the value, and does this subset of the array contain five? Yes, it does. Um, so here's the five, the current value, and it appears in the um, in, in the subset of the array. So this would actually not return negative one. So uh, remember, if you're using and in a if condition, uh, both statements need to return true or evaluate to true in order for the whole thing to pass. Um, uh, so, so in this case, it, it would not return that value five because it appears right here. Um, but anyway, that's what's happening right here. It's looking at everything to the right of um, of the current value in the iteration. And then right here, it's just looking at everything left of the current value. So slice, uh, we're slicing the array, making a subset of it. We're starting at index zero, and then we're going to all the way up to, uh, but not including the current index. Uh, so remember in slice, that second optional argument, it goes all the way up to, but it doesn't include that current index. So if we're at index four, all right, it's gonna start at zero right here and go all the way up to, but not including four. So zero, one, two, and three, okay. So, um, so basically it is, um, it's looking at everything to the left or the current value. So if it looks to the right of everything and nothing is there, it returns negative one with the index of. And if it looks to the left and it's the same thing, then we're going to 
Oh, I don't have much time. Then we're going to return that value, and uh, that will get um, created in the new array through the filtered method. All right, that's all the time that I have. I got 20 seconds because Screentastic Omatic only gives me 15 minutes to work with. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for improvement, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.